Hey everyone, Luke here. Hope you're doing well. Um, if you're interested in doing a hair analysis and doing a program or consultation with me, you can email me, lukepryor at protonmail.com. And also, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps the algos. And um, let us know that you enjoy the content. You can also comment any questions you have about the video down below. So let's get started. Um, so in this video, um, I want to talk about what's the most important data point on a hair test, okay? So we love the hair test. We think that it's the most uh, powerful diagnostic method that we have that are you know available today. And um, so if we if we think that we want to also think about you know what's the most important things on the test to look for, okay? And if I had to choose one data point, I would say it's the sodium potassium ratio, also known as the NAK ratio, okay? So why is this um, ratio so important? Well, we can learn a little about um, the sodium potassium pump, okay? So I found a good video, Amoeba Sisters on YouTube. You can watch this, it's about seven minutes long. It's very good. You can read about sodium potassium pump on Wikipedia. It's in basically every um, biology textbook. So like if you ever did like pre-med or like to be a nurse or something or took any biology class, you probably learned about the sodium potassium pump that happens within the cells. And then you learned how the body uses ATP to basically move um, potassium to the outside. Uh, or actually, it uses the ATP to move potassium inside the cell and potassium outside, actually against its gradient. Which means there's already more sodium um, outside the cell. And so to move sodium you know, to where it's already more concentrated outside the cell wall, it needs to use energy. Okay. And the body does this to um, move things in and out of the cells. And um, it's a good measurement of the electrical difference, okay? So you can think of like your, your neurons, you know, they use this electrical difference to basically like to fire, okay, from my understanding. Um, and so this ratio, this measurement of electrical difference is very, very important, okay? And it's probably the single most important data point we can see to to see like how the body is doing. Is it like charged or discharged? And to a certain extent, it's just a, um, it's like a minor oxidation rate, okay? So a high NAK ratio above 2.5, so the ideal is 2.5, okay? Above that, you're gonna tend to have too much electricity, too much electrical difference in the cells. Um, and what that would, correlate to is kind of like a fast oxidation rate. So high NAK ratio would be more like um, acute stress. So that's more fight or flight. So that would um, sort of tell you at that time when you took the test, when you cut the hair, that that would be, uh, you know, more adrenal response. That'd be higher levels of thyroid hormones, higher levels of adrenal hormones, higher testosterone in men. Um, and the higher you go, the more you're gonna see more of those sort of symptoms. So let's say like above, especially like above five, you'll start to see um, more of those sort of fast oxidizer towards sorts of symptoms. So that means like maybe, uh, you know, you're sweating too much, you know, sounds strange, but like, you know, if you're, that means your body's overheated, right? So you have a tendency to sweat more. Uh, so irritability, um, trouble sleeping, trouble on winding, uh, anger, those are all more acute sort of um, stress responses. And then below 2.5, we're gonna have not enough electricity, not enough of an electrical difference in the cells. Now those are more correlated with a slower oxidation rate. So you're gonna be more correlated towards um, lower testosterone in men, um, you know, more lethargy, apathetic, low energy, low thyroid hormone, low adrenal hormones, um, and things more associated with being in burnout. Okay, there's lack of energy in general, okay? And so bouncing this ratio is the most important sort of movement we can have on the test, okay? Um, and so our number one goal is always if it's below 2.5 to raise it, okay? And if it's above 2.5 to, lo to lower it, okay? Because um, we found that 2.5 is about the ideal. It's kind of that right in between of like your power band where you, your body's working at the most efficient, right? So it's not, you're not spinning your wheels too, there's not too much going on. 
you're not spinning your wheels too hard, but it's also not too low, right? You're kind of in that kind of, um, you know, the state, the in-between state where you want your body to be, okay? Not too fast, not too slow, okay? And to have um, good energy, okay? So our number one goal is always to, um, you know, to raise or lower it, depending if it's low or high, okay? How it was found to be by two, how it was found to be that the ideal was around 2.5 was through the work of a man called Dr. Egg, who um, studied mineral science on his patients and did hair mineral analysis for years and years and found, um, you know, basically correlated with like how people felt and um, also studying like the, you know, how the cells worked and the sort of electrical difference that the body wants. Um, you know, the way that the, the cells are the most efficient, basically, okay? And so above 2.5, we want to lower it, right? So what do we do if it's above 2.5? So above 2.5, we give zinc, okay? So Dr. Egg found that the most powerful way, the mineral that lowers that ratio the best is zinc, okay? Um, and this is why it's a more, of, it can be a more abstract sort of science, right? So... Typically, you would think that, you know, if you wanted to lower the sodium-potassium ratio, you would just uh, eat less salt and eat more potassium, right? But no, that's not how it works, okay? That's not how it works at all. It's not a replacement sort of science. Um, so above 2.5, we give zinc, okay? Below 2.5, we give something called limcumin, okay? And limcumin is a, is a mix of vitamins and minerals. Uh, you can go to we can look up uh, look at the ingredients for limcumin. So limcumin um, has vitamin C in it. I know that it's got um, it's got certain B vitamins. It's got a little bit of it's got a little copper in it. Um, so vitamin C, copper, things like that. So. What this is, is um, it's got vitamin C in it. It's because vitamin C he found to raise that ratio. Um, so B6, magnesium, zinc, copper, manganese. Okay. The zinc's probably, isn't the, probably the least important one. I would say the most important ones in this are the vitamin C, um, B6, and then um, the the copper, manganese, and magnesium. Okay. The, the vitamin A is not quite as important. as Same with the, uh, with the zinc. Okay. Because as we talked about, the zinc actually... Um, lowers the ratio. Now you may be asking why why put zinc in it at all. It's because you uh, you know he he you still want to give the body um, some of it needs. It's like kind of like a multivitamin product, right? But you just don't want to give zinc by itself, or it will lower the ratio. Does that make sense? Um, so below two point five, we give limb coming, and then the lower the ratio, the more we're gonna give, right? So let's say you're like at two. 2.0, we might give only like uh, one limb coming per meal, right? But the lower you go, the more you want to give all the way to like, you know, let's say you had like a, uh, a 0.5 starting potassium ratio. Well, we might give you like two, two, three. So like two, like three limb coming in the morning, two in the morning, uh, two in the afternoon, two at night, uh, as opposed to like one, one, one. Same thing with zinc, right? So the higher that ratio, the more zinc that we want to give in order to lower that ratio, right? So if it's like 2.6, we might just, you know, maybe take like one zinc at night. But if your NAK ratio is like eight, which I've seen before, you know, you can, you can get very, very, um, you know, drastic sort of swings in it and you can get drastic measurements. You know, I've seen, I've seen 10 and higher for the NAK ratio. You want to get more zinc, right? So maybe like, you know, that we talked about like 223 or 333, it's probably the highest I would ever go. Um, three zincs, um, and the, the zincs are like about twenty-two milligrams um, uh, per uh, you know per per tablet, right? So I would say like you know th uh, the max I would go is like three of those, so like sixty milligrams per meal. Okay, over some over that it becomes you know I would say it probably becomes redundant and even slightly toxic. Okay. Uh, okay, so. So we talked about how, you know, if it's if it's high, we want to give zinc. If it's low, we want to give lemcumin. Why it's so important. Just think about, you know, your body is an energetic vessel as well. And the NAK ratio is really 
the most powerful um, way to measure, you know, kind of your electrical being and how charged you are as a human being. Are you undercharged or are you overcharged? Okay. You kind of want to be in between like we talked about. And um, this ratio will flip as you heal on a program, right? So your body will hold on to certain toxic metals to keep it low or high. So an NAK flip is very a very common thing, okay? We call it an NAK flip. And that often happens, so let's say someone starts out with a low sodium potassium ratio. Maybe it's at one. Over the course of a year, you know, they do two or three hair tests and they're diligent about their program, they're taking their limb coming, the NAK will flip above 2.5. Usually that's associated with feeling better, you know, better energy, less lethargy, things like that, okay? Then they'll switch to zinc, okay? You see this a lot. Then they'll take zinc for a while, maybe three months, okay? And then the body will start to eliminate metals, okay? And it'll start to eliminate the metals that were holding up that ratio above 2.5. So the body will start to get rid of compensations as it flips. So this happens to be a lot, right? My NAK will go to three. I'll be doing the program, you know, take, eating vegetables, using masana, eating, you know, uh, taking zinc. And then I'll eliminate, um, let's say like copper or I'll eliminate a, a large amount of aluminum. And then the NAK ratio will flip back down again, okay? Because of the heavy metal that was holding that ratio up that the body needed that as a compensation will be removed okay and this will this process will repeat over and over and over again the body will charge okay then it'll be charged enough where it starts to release the metals underneath it that where that it's holding it in place so it can uh you know compensate for certain things and then it'll get released those metals and then the ratio will go back down again below 2.5 because the metals that it was holding on to to compensate and give itself that charge in the first place are get, being getting rid of. And then it flips over and over and over again as you just go through these sort of cycles of detoxing the layers of heavy metals that are in your body, okay? Um, and it'll happen on its own time. It happens in a, a sort of natural way at your body's own sort of discretion. And, you know, sometimes you can get detox symptoms and things like that, but that's typically the sort of thing that we see on a, on a program, right? This flipping of the NAK ratio. And it's actually a good thing, um, that as your body releases these layers of toxic metals. Okay. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, you know, you can read about the sodium potassium ratio. You can read on Dr. Wilson's website. He just, you know, he talks about it. There's several articles about it. There's, there's good videos you can read about the sodium potassium pump and you can start to understand why it's so important and why um, it's the most important, I would say, data point on a test. And um, and since the test is my, you know, my favorite test there is to gauge the health, I would say the NAK ratio is the single most important thing that you can know about your health. More important than uh, any other test. Think of all the tests, all the blood work you can do, all the screenings you can do. By far the most important data point you can have is, um, in my opinion, the sodium potassium ratio on a properly administered hair analysis. Okay. So I hope you joined the video. Comment below if you have any questions or anything like that. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, if you want to do a program, you can email me Luke Pryor at protonmail.com. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you have a good holidays. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye-bye.